Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Spacing Out. I'm Jason McClellan. And I'm Maureen Ellsbury. Thanks for joining us. We are here to get you caught up on some of the space and UFO stories that have made headlines recently, so let's get to it. Two men observed a pair of bright UFOs in the sky above Rome, Italy, just before 6 p.m. on Saturday, February 8th. The bright and silent objects were observed by a man who is taking out the trash. He quickly informed his friend about the UFOs, and the two men began recording the objects on video. One of the UFOs on video was shown making sudden stops and irregular movements. The men reported the sightings to the Mediterranean UFO Center, or CUFOM, but only after ruling out other possibilities first. One of the witnesses is described as a keen observer of the skies, and he reportedly eliminated mundane identifications like airplanes and Chinese lanterns. According to Italy News website, The Local, CUFOM's initial analysis concluded that one of the objects captured by the video was probably a star, while investigations into the other unconventional object are ongoing. The popular interactive attraction Encounters UFO Experience is returning to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Encounters launched in 2013 at the Myrtle Beach exhibit space, Broadway at the Beach, after more than five years of research and three years of assembling content and artifacts. Following the attraction's successful run last year, it will open again in the same space on April 1, 2014. According to the press release, the exhibit includes seven themed galleries showcasing hundreds of artifacts, witness accounts, and a wealth of myth-debunking information to attract curious visitors from around the world and offer a compelling case for the existence of alien life and UFOs. Several new exhibits have been added to Encounters for 2014, including an alien autopsy exhibit where visitors can grab alien guts and brains, Encounters also features a laser tag style shooting gallery, a propulsion exhibit where UFOs are controlled by magnets and visitors, a guide to ancient history of aliens, and the ability to send messages to space. Patrick Walsh, senior vice president of asset management of the company that owns Broadway at the Beach, says, We are eagerly awaiting the reopening of Encounters, which has received rave reviews from locals and tourists alike. For tickets and more information, visit ufoexhibition.com. The number of UFO sightings reported in Canada during 2013 was 1,180. According to UFOlogy Research, this is the second highest number of sightings recorded in the past 25 years. This Winnipeg-based group compiles data to publish its annual Canadian UFO survey. The 2013 survey, which was published on Monday, March 10th, explains that 2013 was bested only by 2012, when approximately 2,000 UFO sightings were reported. Ufology Research Director Chris Rutkowski suggests that 2012's incredible spike in sightings was likely an anomaly due to the excitement surrounding 2012 and the Mayan calendar, causing more people to report mundane lights in the sky as UFOs. Based on the survey, more than 40% of Canada's 2013 UFO reports were in Ontario, and the typical sighting lasted approximately 13 minutes. But more interestingly, based on the data, approximately 14% of Canada's 2013 UFO reports were classified as unexplained. As the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation explains, although the Canadian government and its various federal agencies used to track and investigate UFOs, it's now up to civilian volunteers to report what's going on in the sky. Although Canada's 2013 UFO reports reached a near record high, the number pales in comparison to the number of UFO reports in the United States. According to the Mutual UFO Network, there were 6,457 U.S. UFO sighting reports filed in 2013. Dr. Roger K. Lear, a pioneering researcher of alleged alien implants, passed away on Friday, March 14th. His interest in extraterrestrial-related phenomena emerged in his early life as a childhood. His desire to find answers related to this enigmatic subject spawned a quest lasting nearly 20 years. Dr. Lear, a podiatric surgeon, maintained a private practice in Ventura County, California for more than 40 years. He became fascinated with alleged alien implants after removing a foreign object from a patient's foot in 1995. He formed a nonprofit organization called ANS Research Incorporated to investigate these anomalous objects. He and his surgical team performed 15 surgeries on alleged alien abductees, resulting in the removal of 16 objects they believe are alien implants. Dr. Lear had struggled with various health issues in recent years. He reportedly had been suffering from a debilitating case of shingles, leading to serious infections in his leg and foot. These issues were aggravated by diabetes. A fundraiser for Dr. Lear was held in 2012 at a mutual UFO network Los Angeles meeting to help pay his substantial medical bills. The official cause of death is still unclear, but according to paranormal researcher Christopher O'Brien, Dr. Lear was in the hospital on March 14th awaiting surgery on his own foot that had been injured in a 2010 car accident. He reportedly left to use the restroom, but he never came out.
A post from March 15th on the ANS Research website simply states, Today is a sad day to report the passing of Dr. Roger K. Lear. We have lost a great family man, podiatrist, and devoted ufologist. He will be greatly missed by all. And we certainly agree with that. We here at Open Minds had the great privilege of getting to spend a lot of time with Roger Lear over the years and get, get to know him really well. Uh, so this is really shocking and sad. Yeah, I mean, definitely before his time, and though he was faced with a lot of health issues these past few years, it will keep his family in our thoughts for sure. And, um, you know, even in a 2009 interview with Alejandro, Dr. Lear said he was shocked by, you know, this research he ended up completing. I've done 15 surgeries. I was in the 42 countries in seven years lecturing on this subject, and I've written seven books. So mm -hmm. I didn't ask for this. Uh, I didn't expect anything like this to happen. And if somebody would have predicted this, you know, maybe 30 years ago, I would have told them they were nuts. Yeah, it, it was, Roger was, uh, I was a big fan of Rogers because he was a big advocate of using science, looking at these mysteries, and not trying to force an answer, but looking and, and seeing what mm -hmm. the science said and, and just being baffled and, and excited by the, the mysterious nature of what he was finding. Right. One thing I will mention is our friend Jeremy Corbell yes. was working on a full-length documentary about Roger Lear and his work called Alien Scalpel, and so he has um, launched that website now to, to honor Roger, and he did say that, that Dr. Lear got to see most of the documentary before he passed, and, and he was And he specifically said that, yeah, he loved what he saw. Yeah. So that, that film is still in development. The working title is Alien Scalpel, but we have more information about that at openminds.tv. Well, let's talk about an interesting sighting. We mentioned this, th these UFOs over Rome, and I agree that one was probably a star, but mm -hmm. the, the other object in this video that, that we have at OpenMinds.tv is fascinating in its movements, because as we described, you know, you've got an object moving through the sky, and a lot of times these bright lights, you know, it could be Chinese lanterns, could be airplanes, right. things that look weird, but it does stop and change its direction and has very abnormal behavior on the sky. Right, and I, I don't know what it is yet either, but I'm going to say this, that that video drove me nuts. It's very <laughs> hard to analyze the one that um, CUFOM sent us because A, they've got this crazy mu music in the background and they've got all these weird cut shots um, and zooms and you know I, I didn't get to see the raw footage and that's what I would have like to have seen because oh, I agree with you a lot of these these videos that are heavily edited and lots of zooms and slow motions and things like that that's good and that can help but it's difficult to determine what the actual footage was what the right. original behavior was like and in and trying to isolate what was added later by whoever edited the footage exactly and so I feel like I can't offer any sort of analysis to that yeah yeah it is difficult um, it is an unknown, and I think it's pretty fascinating. I will point out, though, that some of the behavior that can be seen at points in that video do resemble very much a remote-controlled aircraft, mm -hmm. a, a, a quadcopter or something like right. that. I mean, you and I just saw one last week when we That's were out right. in Mesa, Arizona, and we might put that video up, too, because I got a little bit of video showing it, and somebody <laughs> happened to say, what is that in the sky? And we saw it, and right away we could tell that it was an RC craft with LEDs on it, and it was fun to watch it move back and forth, but it was striking to people because they had They were all it filming it, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, guys, that is all for this episode of Spacing Out. Remember to visit our website, openminds.tv, for all the latest news. And if you're a podcast listener, go to openminds.tv slash radio and check out Open Minds UFO Radio. Make sure to click on the like button if you enjoyed today's show and subscribe to our channel so you know when we post new content. Thanks again for joining us today. I'm Maureen Ellsbury. And I'm Jason McClellan. We will see you in the future. If you have a UFO sighting or something you would like to report to Open Minds, you can go to our website at openminds.tv and click the contact button to send us your request. Or you can email us at contact at openminds.tv. You can also call us at 1-877-UFO-0110. That's 1-877-836-0110.